bir açayım burasını. Yok yok. Şimdi sessiz alalım. Var, evet. Koyup ver sen gibi. Hmm. Yolda çok var, azaltı da var. What we also know is that patients that are in the hospital because of their COVID-19 infection, they also have increased risk of developing these secondary infections because these patients first are quite ill, and so they'll be in the hospital for a longer period of time, which increases their risk. They have, uh, in many cases, are on mechanical respiration devices, which increases the risk for pneumonia. And they also have intravenous lines and urinary catheters, which increase the risk for sepsis and urinary tract infections. So a COVID-19 patient is at significant increased risk for developing these infections. I think one of the complications we see is that the bacteria and the fungi that cause secondary infections in the hospital um, are much more serious than organisms that cause infections outside the hospital. And that's because these organisms are resistant to many antibiotics. Just remember, it's easier to prevent an infection than it is to treat an infection. So it may be that Turkey's good experience is because they prevent infections more effectively than what other countries do. I absolutely disagree with what the microbiologist said. We will see this infection get much more serious over the next months. And I am convinced that we will never reach a level of herd immunity to protect ourselves, that it'll have to be from a vaccine that's going to eliminate this problem. What we find is that most of the patients that die from hospitalization for their COVID-19 infection actually have secondary infections that in many cases are responsible for those deaths. So when you have COVID-19, that infection is going to stimulate the immune response. And in fact, in many cases, when patients get so sick, it's because our own immune response is overly aggressive and damages the functions of our hearts, of our lungs, of our kidneys. The same thing occurs when you get a super infection. And again, it is said that fewer than 10% develop super infections. But the reality is that we don't do enough diagnostic tests to accurately determine that. The incidence of sepsis was maybe 30% caused by bacteria and fungi. So we think that super infections in the SARS coronavirus 2 is much more common than what we've been able to document and is responsible for the majority of patients that end up dying. If you look at the guidance that's been given by the World Health Organization, Center for Disease Control in the United States, professional medical societies, they all recommend that diagnostics be used early in a patient where we suspect sepsis. And the reason for that is that without diagnostics, we will have to treat the patients empirically 
And that would be empirically for bacterial infections, for fungal infections, in some cases for viral infections. The gram-negative bacteria, as they become more and more resistant to antibiotics, and in some cases we now see infections with gram-negative bacteria that are untreatable. I certainly expect that many of the patients with COVID-19 infections that die die because they were infected with organisms that were resistant to all of the antibiotics available. So I think it is a serious problem. I think we need diagnostics to be able to demonstrate how serious it is, um, but it is a problem that we have to we have to deal with. Most PCR tests are very sensitive and most are equally effective in recovering the organism. There are some tests that are on the market that are not good. And so it becomes important for the laboratory to understand the level of sensitivity that their assay has that they're using. We know that um, many of the COVID-19 patients that have signs of symptoms of sepsis, it's related to the COVID infection and not a super infection. But we also know that there is a significant portion of COVID-19 patients that die and die because they have a super infection. 75% of patients uh, with COVID infections worldwide will be treated with antibiotics. So it becomes important to use antibiotics wisely. If a patient is septic, that it becomes critically important to collect the right diagnostic specimens to be able to determine, do they have a super infection?